Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the morning toast. Happy Monday. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, I don't want to scare you. I really, really don't. But I need to issue a trigger warning because Claudia is wearing her spooky, scary skeleton pajamas. And for all those of you listening as a podcast, it might be the reason to switch to YouTube today. No, it, or it might not be. If you're feeling already like the Sunday scaries might have scared you off. <laughs> Stay far away from the YouTube channel of The Morning Toast and definitely don't subscribe to our channel. Oh, no. That's spooky. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I'm wearing my spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Um, I don't know. I was just feeling it. I slept in these pajamas and I was usually like I do my makeup in my pajamas and then I put on like an appropriate sweater or a blouse. But I thought, what's more appropriate for a Monday than spooky, scary skeletons sending shivers down your spine? It's a spooky Monday. I think you capture the vibe, plus your glam is so on point today Thank that you. it really, it balances. You have balance I in your look. I so firmly believe in living a balanced lifestyle. That's kind of what my whole brand is about. Um, yes, my glam is on point today because I just have the busiest day. Meetings, meetings, meetings? Meetings, meetings, meetings. I think you might have forgotten that tomorrow... Let me just make sure of the date. Tomorrow is the uh, launch of my paperback book. So I've got some press to do today. I have. Press. Um, yeah. Your girl. I, I don't know if I should say it. I didn't even tell you yet already. But I'm just going to be on like a local. Not a local. A national news segment. That's so exciting. I yeah. need to set my TiVo. But the TiVo. The number one <laughs> reason I'm wearing glam like this is because I did a TikTok this morning. Like a transition using my new song. And it came out so good because I look like gorgeous I didn't really intend to look like that this gorgeous like this threatening to other women but check out my TikTok okay you have to send it to me when you make it I feel like you only send me like the mediocre TikToks because you're like is this funny or is this not but like send me the bangers I didn't realize like I was capable of putting out mediocre TikToks that's brand new information to me it happens it happens (laughs) Not not everyone can hit, obviously. No, that's true. Because, like, some of them need to be mediocre in order for the others to be great. Otherwise, there's no nothing to compare it to. Yeah, for sure. Well, while you're wearing your spooky, scary skeletons, let me just tell you how cool I am today. Yeah. You probably think, like, oh, you're just wearing a hoodie. Like, yeah, that's what I think. You're phoning it in. This is the Gap Yeezy hoodie. What did you pay for it? Uh, Zach got it for me, so... Oh, it's a gift. Doesn't count. Yeah, but also it's Gap prices. I think it was Mac. I think it was like $80. Oh, okay. $80? Can you do a spin for us? <laughs> um, sure. It's just blue. It's just blue. Hmm. I, like, there's something... It's really um thick and heavy, but like in a nice, comfortable way. Yeah. And it's kind of like cropped. So I think I'm wearing a large, but it looks like a fitted sweatshirt. Got it, got it. Okay, cool. I would Very love to see that in person. Yeah, no, definitely. Come come check it out. Did you get my reference? $80. From my show, right? Yeah. But that, that <laughs> okay, Jackie loves to quote my comedy special, which is so kind of you, available to stream for free on Amazon Prime. That um, one Didn't specific, make it. It didn't make the cut. I only used it in like one show and like it wasn't great, but you were really kind of moved by it. I was. It stuck out to me. You $80. can't You can help what lives in your mind rent free. And this is why I have to see your new tour because I need new material. I actually can't believe that you have not seen my new tour. I've I saw the first show, the video. first New York show on video. Yes. Yeah. Um but yeah, no, beyond that I, I know that it's changed a lot mm-hmm. and I ha- I don't know the tropes. I don't know the one-liners. And that's also like happening this week I'm back on the road I'm going to DC on Thursday and Friday to Parks Casino in Philly and I'm actually really excited like I really like taking long breaks between shows but then like when it's the day before the show I'm like oh my god I wish my last show wasn't over a month ago yeah but it's fine you've got your your skeleton boys with you you'll take them on the road they've got your back and your front and And my side and my crotch (laughs) Yeah. Um, we have a great show for you guys. It's Monday. Lots of happenings that we must discuss. Also, mm-hmm. lots of TV recap. I did finish Ted Lasso. I have a lot of thoughts for the TV recap. I watched Euphoria last night. And then, of course, the worst show on television with not a hero in sight, The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Um, we'll be discussing that in the TV recap as well. You needed to finish Ted Lasso because what you left us with on Friday, your oh, assessment. Yeah. Yeah. I just needed to be able to talk about it. I won't spoil it. We'll talk about it in the TV recap, but it needed to be addressed, and yeah. I couldn't let you think, like, keep going like that. No, you're 100% right. 
Yeah, so that's really exciting that you don't let them forget. How's the song going? Great. I mean, the TikToks are, um, they're difficult for me because I'm really not a dancer. After our show on Friday, I like spent 30 minutes learning the TikTok dance to my song. And it's up. It's not great, but I tried, you know, it was. I thought it was, I thought it was good. Okay. Okay. Thank you. It was a complex dance, you know, not your typical basic TikTok dance. It's not like other dances. No, it's not. But would you expect anything less from someone who's not like other girls? I wouldn't. So there you have it. Um, So I hope everyone had a good weekend listening to the song, drinking. I did nothing this weekend. I felt like you. Like, I did not leave my house. I didn't move a muscle. Like, if you watch my Instagram stories yesterday, you know that I had 91 steps at the end of the day. And I was very proud of that. Sometimes self-care looks like 91 steps. Couldn't have said it better. But I do think more often than not, self-care looks like hard work. The more I think about self-care and, like, the meaning of it, I think the term has really become, like, completely – um, watered down mm. but I do think most often self-care looks like hard work I agree because for me when I'm like busy booked productive I, that is really unfortunately when I feel my best mm-hmm. and when I'm doing nothing even though I'm enjoying it at the time I go through an existential crisis like is this what my life is meant to be yeah so sometimes you have to put in the work in order to enjoy true self-care how are you feeling today, Pregio? I'm feeling pretty good. You know, mornings are my time to shine. It's so – I'm two different people. Like, I'm Hannah Montana and Miley Stewart. <laughs> like, in the morning, I am Hannah. And then in the evening, I'm crabby old Miley. No, you're like Jackson. It's so – it's so crazy. But, you know, it's we're just enjoying this time. But it's a wild ride, you guys. It's a journey. My weekend was – um. Filled with hobbies, actually. I got a lot done. First of all, I started playing Wordle, thanks to you. Oh, did you do today's? No, not yet. Me neither. I started it, and it's pretty hard. I'm only on. The, I only did two tries already. Oh, I try to like do it, you know, in one sitting. I don't know why I feel like someone's timing me. They're not. Um, and I usually do it in one sitting too. But I was just like doing my makeup, and I'm like, oh my god, Wordle. Oh wow. No, I'll save that for later. It'll be, be my big activity. It's very exciting. Um, and I also I did a crossword puzzle. I've been doing piano lessons me and brew do about like 30 minutes a day we mm-hmm. have two pieces that we're working on what you first and brew it- tickling the ivories <laughs> brew's like mom you stink mom Literally. you're off but he, no it- by the way you know how he does that thing with his head he like cocks it to the right when he hears yeah off. when he hears you'll be practicing and like playing a wrong note and you'll turn around and brew's like Mer? yeah no he's a really tough critic but it's been good for the brain. And then I started a new show, which a lot of people told me I would like. It's called Pole Dark, and it's on Amazon Prime. It's a period piece, you know, mm. uh, Cornwall, 1785. And it's good. It's it's enjoyable. So it's kind of slow. So, like, I can't just watch it all day long. But I'm in the middle of season two, and there's some likable characters. So I'm happy. Okay, good. Yeah. Seems like we both had both productive and relaxing weekends. Precisely. That's wonderful news. Well, you love to hear it. Um, so yeah, like that's really it for me. I have not much to update everyone on since Friday because I didn't leave my bed since the last time we podcasted. Yeah, I feel kept abreast and I feel like without further ado to do to do, we can Where get into are you to do to do. Where is do to do to do? On the bed right there behind me. Mm-hmm. I would, like, turn my screen and show you my bed, but there's something about, like, showing someone, like, your YouTube channel, like, your bed, and I haven't staged this side of the room. I only stage what's behind me. Like, it feels very personal and invasive. It's all wrong. Don't do it. It is, right? Okay, I'm not doing it. Yeah. That's like when you go to someone's house and they, like, want to show you around and, and they want to show you their parents' room. You're it's like, like oh. I'll wait by the door. <laughs> I'll just wait outside. I'll just, no, I'll just wait right here. Oh, no, I'll wait you, down the block. You, like, poke your head in and you're like, oh, yeah, nice. No, yeah. No. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Stevenson. <laughs> I think, like, there's something crazy about, like, kids who, like, invite their friends into their parents' rooms. It just feels very personal. I totally agree. So that's what's going on to my left. Got it. We won't go into your room. Without further ado to do to do, it is time for the Fast Five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. <sighs> And today's episode is brought to you by Helium 10. Is anyone looking for a career change, an alternative to the traditional nine to five, or you're an entrepreneur who wants to start a business on your own terms? 
Well, you got to check out Helium 10. They will teach you how to build a thriving e-commerce business from A to Z. It's an all-in-one software suite that's designed to help entrepreneurs launch, manage, and scale a profitable e-commerce business on Amazon and Walmart.com. There's a community of over a million users, and they have all the tools, data, and training to be successful. The great thing about Helium 10 is like, okay, I want to be my own business owner, but like, I don't have a business to own. They do everything for you. You don't even need to invent a product. The Helium 10 tools will help you find a product, source it, and then tap into Amazon's existing customer base, product demand, and shipping infrastructure to launch the business. They handle all the shipping and the returns for you. You are merely just doing what they tell you. It's amazing. You can really, really change your life. It's free to join. It's not just a trial offer. Your free account includes ongoing monthly access to Helium 10's most popular tools at no cost to you. It has been used by over a million people worldwide, and they sell goods directly to Amazon and Amazon's customer base of 5 billion shoppers. So work when you want from wherever you want with the help of Helium 10. Join the over a million Helium 10 users worldwide by signing up for a free account at helium10.com slash toast. That's helium10.com slash toast. Today's episode is also brought to you by Bull and Branch, the best, best sheets on the market. Take it from someone who I think on average spends more time in her bed than any human being walking this earth. You're going to want to check out Bull and Branch, the best bedding out there. Their signature sheets feel so soft and light, you will really forget you're not actually sleeping on a cloud. They're sustainably made for uncompromising quality from field to factory. So if you dream of comfortable sheets or you're very particular about your sheets like I am, I really don't like, like there are sheets that are really nice and lovely and warm, but you like die of sweat in the middle of the night. Bull and Branch has somehow managed to have like delicious, soft, warm sheets that also keep you cool throughout the night. The temperature control from their buttery, soft, lightweight, organic cotton is just stunning. It actually gets softer over time with the more times you wash it, which is nice. And it's not too hot. It's not too cold. It's really the perfect year-round sheet for most sleepers. They focus on quality over quantity, so they don't give you inflated thread counts because more isn't always better. They're also made to a higher standard. The sheets are 100% organic organic cotton excuse me oh my god (laughs) ethical production and thoughtful attention to every detail they also give you a fair price plus a 30-day risk-free trial with free shipping and returns so experience the best sheets you'll ever feel at bowlandbranch.com get 15 percent off your first set of sheets when you use promo code toast at checkout so that's bowlandbranch b-o-l-l-a-n-d branch.com promo code toast Thank you so much, Claudia. And before we get into the stories, we actually do need to talk about something, and it's a bit of sports news. Oh, we do. Because sports were on last night, football, it was like the semifinals, and we were, sorry, you were very close. You're, we both made predictions for who we thought we would be in the, would be in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. We made them months ago when there was like no real information. information. Just, you know, taking a shot in the dark. And up until last night, like, you had a chance. A pretty good chance. Bucks versus Bills. Bucks versus Bills. Now the Bucks are out, which is and and the Bills. And the Bills. Are out? Oh, okay, okay, yeah. No, last night was not a good night for my fantasy chart. Right, but I just want to congratulate you for having made it that far. I think that's pretty cool, considering you. you know considering our lack I of knowledge. Guessed like. Right. And so before we get into the fast five, I think we need to put in our predictions. We need to update them based on the information that's given. Okay. Here's the thing. I'm not gonna. I don't want to predict. I want to put my full support behind one team. And once you hear why, Jackie, you're going to want to do the same. Okay. So here's who's contending still. We have the Rams. The 49ers. Versus the 49ers. And then Kansas City versus uh, team. um, Whoever beat the Bucks. No, Frick. What's their name? It's like a. Charades. Do charades. No, I. Ooh, I mean, I could Is just it an animal? ESPN. I think so. It's like a weird animal, it feels like. A and it's not a team we talk about often. A jaguar. Panther. Oh my God. This is, no, no, no. This is infuriating. I know, people on the other end are okay. probably like these two morons. I'm just packed all Who beat the Bucks? Babe! Zach! I can't. I'll just look it up. Hold on. Just call husbands. I don't think he can hear me. They're the ones who beat the Buccaneers. Yeah, right? babe, who's in the Super Bowl? Oh, my God. You shit out of oh sorry. We're recording. But it's so it's <laughs> Rams versus 49ers. Hey, you scared me. You can't do that. Oh, my God. Okay, sorry. Oh, my God. Tell them to just get on with it. Rams versus 49ers. Yes. And Chiefs. Bengals. That's the animal. I'm unfamiliar with their work. Yeah. That's but, why. 
But I do want to say that we at the Toast have made an official decree as to who we're supporting. We have. And you're going to get behind it once you – I totally forgot to tell you this. Okay. We are rooting for the San Francisco 49ers. <gasps> it's their time? There is a toaster on the team, on the field and off the field. I just found this out last night from Ben. There's a toaster on the field? His name is Kyle Juszczyk. His wife is an enormous toaster, and he messaged Ben that his wife is a toaster, and he actually listens quite a lot, and he enjoys it. Kyle Juszczyk, the 49ers have our support. Oh, my God. Of course. I'm throwing all of my weight behind them now. And I've he's, like, really good, too. It's not like he's, like, you know, a scrub. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's so interesting. So you're saying it's the 49ers time. I'm saying, and I do believe the last time I accurately predicted a Super Bowl, I predicted that it was not the 49ers time. Right. And now I'm saying it is. That's so interesting because before I knew this important fact, right, that changes everything, mm -hmm. I would have said, like, I would probably have chosen the Rams over the 49ers. And also because the Super Bowl is taking place in L.A., in LA. it would be like another cool thing where, you know, the home team is having hosting the Super Bowl. Well, it's still California, so I just want to say it's still pretty cool. Yeah, still pretty cool. And then on the other side, I think the Chiefs will beat the Bengals, considering I couldn't even remember their name. Me too. And I just want to say, like, for my POV, I really was, like, a Chiefs girly. Mm -hmm. um, until the lead quarterback, um, Patrick, and his brother, like, you know, I've come on here many times and talked about his brother's TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know him. I, I know him by name, Austin. Yeah, Jackson. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know him by name. That's not his name. It's Jackson. Austin Mahomes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the second time in as many weeks his name has come up. <laughs> Literally. Well, his brother, um, you know, I'm always a fierce defender of Jackson Mahomes. I think the kids on TikTok are really mean to him. But you know what? Like, his content has taken a shift, and it's, like, really painful to watch. And I think that he should stop. Okay. And you think, like, going to the Super Bowl, it just won't – it won't be good for him? No, because I think of the content that we're going to get at the Super Bowl, and I'm not interested. Okay. And we also, like, already got that. Yeah. So he someone needs, else's turn. He needs new shtick. I just hate when there's, like, one team that's, like, so good all the time. Like, I get it because, like, Patrick is the best. But, like, it's kind of annoying. But I don't think any of these four teams are the one team that's good all the time. I think the Chiefs are, actually. Like, they're always just, like, winning. No, I think they're really strong and solid. But they won the one time. They Like, it could be their time again. No, but, like, it's not like, like the Patriots. At the top of, at they're the, always at the top of their game. Like, they're giving early vibes of the Patriots. That's what I'm saying. No, I don't feel that way, but I understand well, that you might. I know more than you, yeah. No, I think I do. I have just an intuition for these things. Oh, yeah. Remind me, who who were your picks again for who was going to the Super Bowl? Seahawks. The Seahawks. Versus and Bucks. The Bucks. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's I just have an intuition. Okay. <laughs> <say. laughs> it's the 49ers time. You heard it here first from page of page six sports tomorrow. It's the 49ers time. Okay. Very cool. We're wishing, we're sending our best wishes to all the toasters in locker rooms all over. Don't get it twisted. There are actually quite a few toasters. Ready? When I go on tour, I find out where, like, the professional athletes who are toasters are. They, like, come out of the woodwork. When I was in New Orleans, I found out Will Lutz, the kicker for the Saints, who's very good. Well, his wife's a toaster, but he came to the show. He's so cute. She was so cute. Nice to know that New Orleans is taken care of with the steamy vibes. Yeah, for sure. But... There aren't, I can't imagine there are that many athletes listening, male athletes listening to the toast. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's the, the wax. Girl, it's the wax. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. You'd really never know. Look at Kyle Juszczyk. Look at Kyle Juszczyk. Okay. Can't wait. I have to get a jersey. Literally with the toast logo. Cute. Because, like, it's the Super Bowl, but, like, between us, like, it's really about us, right? It's always about us. I'm so glad we are on the same page. Now I think we can get into the Fast Five stories. I just needed to update everyone. Yeah, no, I'm glad we, we circled back. Mm -hmm. Our first story, um, a lot of news coming out this weekend about Garrett Hedlund and Emma mm. Roberts. First of all, they split up. And second mm. of all, he has been arrested for public intoxication. Okay, am I crazy or has this entire series of events like already happened? Uh, not to me. 
They've some of it up before yeah they I, they I always assumed they were on off i didn't know that they were on and now they're off and um then he was arrested for public intoxication saturday night in tennessee but he also is in a suit of a prior dui he's had like drunken behavior okay. criminal behavior before so there's a, th- this is not the first time something like this has happened but he was arrested and taken into custody in franklin county with a bond set at twenty one hundred dollars franklin county so nice The arrest occurred just one day after news broke that he split from girlfriend Emma Roberts. The two share one child together, one-year-old son Rhodes. Um, According to People, who was the first to break the news on Friday, they called it quits a few weeks ago following a few rocky months in their relationship. An insider said it's sad and they are trying to call, they're trying their best to co-parent. It's been hard. Also, he is being sued for negligence after allegedly causing a head-on collision when he fell asleep at the wheel while driving in L.A. in January 2020. In court docs obtained by E! News, he allegedly, quote, passed out behind the wheel of his vehicle and ran a solid red light at a high rate of speed, forcing him to crash into a woman and her daughter. (gasps) Yeah. So now he's being sued. So this is... You know what that means. You're done with him. That and this one's this is like what I was saying with Tiffany Haddish. Sometimes it's easier than others. Like Sam Hunt, e- very easy to write off. Tiffany Haddish, a little hard. This, extremely hard. Garrett Hedlund is the star of two of my favorite movies. What's the second one? Country Strong. Oh, and Georgia Rule. Georgia Rule. And did you know he was in the Friday Night Lights movie? I never saw it. Me neither. But they called him the Friday Night Lights actor, and so I had to Google it. Okay, that's a stretch and a half. He's clearly the country strong actor. Yeah. So anyways, this is all just crazy timing. I do believe that they broke up a while ago and then this story was dropping and Emma wants nothing to do with this. So now news of their split is resurfacing. But we must have known this January 2020 DUI news back in January 2020 and just like. Yes. No, I'm telling you, I've heard this before. Right. So this man needs help. Like, yeah. Serious help. No wonder his relationship with his the mother of his child's Rocky. Like, he's unwell. Yeah. Yeah. This is really fucked up. I'm sorry. China, like, I can't really fuck with you anymore, Garrett. And I know how much, you know, that probably means to you. But this is really upsetting. This is upsetting. Truly. What what are you doing? I just, I can't go on another rant. But, like, it's just not that hard to not drink and drive. Like, especially when you get paid millions of dollars for one movie. Yeah. Well, most this one on Saturday night was public intoxication. But, like... If you're getting arrested for being drunk, like, you're just, like, your drinking is, is not what it should be. Yeah. yeah. If I haven't gotten arrested for public intoxication, really nobody should. Okay. And I think that's the good test. Okay. Are you ready for our next story? A little more couple news. Yeah. Nick Jonas and wife Priyanka Chopra welcomed a baby girl as they announced the arrival of their first child together via surrogate. We are overjoyed. So on Friday, Nick and Pri put out a statement saying that they have a bebe girl that they welcomed via surrogate last week, and they're just overjoyed. Yes, there's actually a lot to this story that is beyond the just quote card that they posted. Their baby was born 12 weeks early. Yes, I saw that. They were expecting baby to be due in April, according Mm -hmm. to Daily Mail, and it's January. Which is always really scary. Yeah. But I'm sure that they have the best care and we're all rooting for them. Yeah, for sure. And then on TikTok, people are quaking. Like I've somehow ended up on like Nick and Priyanka talk. Um, And they're quaking about, you know, in the article it says, like, uh, Priyanka hasn't struggled with any fertility issues, just, like, scheduling-wise. Like, they decided to go be a surrogate. And people are like, you know, this is so offensive to, like, women who struggle with fertility. And, like, I guess. But, like, if that was me and, like, I was working and being famous and I also wanted to have a child, like, how great is that? You know, I thought we were, like, done judging women for shit like this. Yeah. I mean, that sounds like Nick talk is a little bit uh, regressive. Regressive over there. And also, sure, that's what that said. But you never know what's going on with people. Right. What does page six know about Priyanka Chopra's fertility? Right. Like, it, it's not just, like, an on-off button. Like, you can or you can't. Like, there's so many different factors that go into it. And so much, right. like, I, I just... She's also a woman of a certain age, which obviously changes the risk of the pregnancy. Like, who cares? Right. Like, literally, who cares? Right. Exactly. So... I'm happy for them. This is really sweet. I mean, obviously, like, the Joe Bros love just family and, mm-hmm. and having – and the, now, like, this is just so cute. All the little cousins will be running around. No, it is really cute. It, like, completes a trifecta, and it actually officially, like, makes us old. 
You th- do you think this is what makes us old? Nick was the youngest, like, and oh. like when when he came into our lives, like he was actually prepubescent, and like now he has a child. Yeah, well, he's twenty nine. No, I mean it's he's on track. Like, no, it no, all no, makes sense. Yeah, but like for us, it just it puts things in perspective. How about that? Yeah, and I guess like all of the girly girls were like going to the tour because like back in the day, like we were obsessed. It's like. And some of those girly girls are still single and, like, we're holding out hope that maybe they were the one for Nick Jonas and, like, this Priyanka thing wasn't going to last. Yeah. But, no, this is definitely all three. They were taken. And if you need another sign, they are taken. Yeah, maybe it's time to get into a new band. Yeah. What's a new band? I don't know. What's that band that's, like, everywhere? AJR? Huh? They're a cool new rock band. You should check them out. You know about a cool new rock band? I do. What is it? They sing that song. Go out with a bang. You know that song. No. You do. No, it's really, really cool with the kids. Everyone's talking. <laughs> oh, is it? I'm, I'm no, unclear. I swear. I swear. No, I believe you. I swear. It was in the car- commercial for Kardashians last season. Mm, if you heard it, you would know reference. it. If you heard it, you would know it. Yeah, for sure. But I'm I'm not clear what you're talking about at this current moment. Well, you're, I guess, you're just not as up on what's cool. No, it's possible. Like, I'm not as Gen Z as you. It's called AJR. Check them out. AJR. Okay, I'll check them out. I think. <laughs> um. Also, what was the last thing I was going to say? Oh, you know what? Like, from the moment that these two got together, like, there has been so much doubt. And myself included. Like, I have to take responsibility for my actions. Like, there has been so much doubt. Um. Even, like, when they were engaged, like, are they even going to get married? But, you know, through every life stage, like, they have just persevered. And you know what? I'm here to say I was wrong. And there are a lot of people out there who were wrong who, like, still refuse to admit they're wrong. That's crazy. I mean, I I came around to it Me over too. a year ago. Like, and I, I already have admitted that I was wrong. And I'm happy to be wrong about this one because they just seem, like, really happy. And watching the roast most recently, I feel like that was, like, the biggest glimpse we've had into their relationship. And, like... They are just, they're the real deal. They're the real deal. And, like, it's time we all got on board, honestly. Yeah. If you're one of the people who is, like, lagging behind, you've got to get on the ship. It, the I ship has like sailed. the world's biggest denier, like, no, ever. Y- yeah. No, it's crazy how we felt then. Yeah. Like, there was, and that was also at a time when, like, so many celebrity relationships popped up and turned into engagements that fizzled out really quickly. Like, Ariana and Pete. Ariana and Pete, Haley and Justin. Mm-hmm. And I just, like, threw these two in the boat with them, and I was like, yeah, we're not going anywhere. Yeah. And then, like, the wedding was, like, legit, and then they just never stopped being married. So we have no choice but to believe. Yeah. No. Doubters, non-believers, get on Once board. Once were her dreamers. Exactly. Well, muscle so, talk to the fam. Very, very happy for them. That was some exciting, surprising news. Very surprising because, like, it just came out of nowhere. It's not like we're pregnant. It's like, oh, there's a child. Yeah. Okay, our next story is very sad. Regina King's son has died by suicide. Ian Alexander Jr., the only son of renowned actress Regina King, has died by suicide. The Academy Award winner confirmed the tragic news in a statement to People on Friday. They said, our family is devastated at the deepest level by the loss of Ian. He is such a bright light who cared so deeply about the happiness of others. Our family asks for respectful consideration during this private time. Thank you. This is just awful. This is such an awful story. His 26th birthday was on Wednesday. He was Regina's only child with um, her ex-husband. And, I mean, this just, like, breaks the heart. The mental health crisis I know in this country right now is not to be ignored. No, yet it is. Like, and I saw on, like, a Page Six article, you know, he had some, like, haunting last posts on social mm-hmm. media. And some of the tweets he had sent out before, you know, before, um, were like, you know, Instagram's bad for my health. Like, it was just really, like, a cry for help. Yeah. No, it's really upsetting. And I also... I feel like in the last even few days or week, like, so many celebrities have passed away. Yes. Also, Chris Daughtry's daughter. Um, oh, my God. So sad. Passed away last week, too. Mm-hmm. Meatloaf. I don't think we spoke about him. No, ben was really, like, on the verge of tears when he heard Meatloaf died. I didn't oh, know and he- last night, Terry Mugler. Right, right. I didn't know Ben was such a big Meatloaf fan until I saw his... um. Instagram. Oh my god, have you never been like in a karaoke machine with Ben? I guess not, and honestly. I would do anything. And it's like an eight minute song. It's so fucking annoying. Oh yeah, and that's really Ben's um like his key. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's his perfect pitch. <laughs> I can hear him singing it. 
it's one of the most annoying things ever. And like, especially when, when we get together with Taylor Strecker and Taylor Donahue, it's also Taylor Donahue's like favorite song. So the two of them, like, I just can't. Oh, wow. I, you learned something new every day. I didn't know you guys had all this going on. And it's Ben's go-to shower song. So like, I hear it all the time. Oh. When he gets in the shower, he's like, Alexa, play Meatloaf. Oh. Yeah, he was really upset. There have been a few celebrities in the last couple of years that like really got to Ben. Betty White. Mm-hmm. Kobe. Mm-hmm. Meatloaf. Yeah. It's just and it's really funny sad. Because, like, you know, for us, like, our whole lives are, like, pop culture celebrity. Like, we are very vocally invested in certain people. But Ben's not like that. He just, like, goes about and, like, gets influenced by who he gets influenced by. Like, right. Betty White. So it's just interesting to see, like, the cycle of, you know, celebrity Who's, and Like, fandom. who makes an impact on you, really? And oh, out of all I mean, the th- – no, no, that wasn't a question. It's like – it's oh. you know, there's – there's sorry, that's, like, a lot to ask of someone. No, I mean, who makes an impact on one? Yeah. You know, of oh, all Bob the celebrities Saget. out there, singers, comedians, etc. like, some people just stick with you. Bob Saget is another yeah. one who just passed away. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and did you actually see the, the news story about John Mayer? I thought it was, like, really menschy. You know, he – The plane? Yeah. Yeah, do you want to share? Yeah, it was just this article basically saying that John Mayer was the one who paid for and chartered a plane from Orlando to – la to get bob's remains back in in time for the ceremony because bob's jewish and if you're jewish you have to be buried like the day after you die or the day extenuating circumstances like asap yeah Yeah. asap so i thought that was very menschy and it wasn't like you know a john mayer published article it was like a source really revealed it and did you watch the instagram live of um, jeff ross and john mayer no so they were like driving in this little car (laughs) And they went on Instagram Live and they were like, we are – they're obviously just like really, really close with Bob and his wife and are trying everything to like be helpful. So they had driven to the airport – they took an Uber to the airport and picked up Bob's Prius because he drove himself to the airport for his gigs. And they were just talking about how like, you know, Bob was such a star, like could have had a limousine take him to the airport, but he always drove his Prius because he was like a workhorse. And they were just like getting really emotional in the car because like this car was like symbolic of like Bob. It was really, really sweet. That's really sweet. I saw that they picked up his car, but I didn't know that they went live on the way. And they were just, like, sharing little stories. It was very sweet. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's been just, like, a heavy time. You're right. Like, a beginning of the year that feels, like, heavier than most. Yeah. I I feel – that's how I feel. Yeah. So sending love to everyone. Yeah. Okay. Switching gears. Some of our favorite girlies. Jennifer – Is it our favorite girlies? Who are brought to you by Framebridge? <laughs> it is. Yeah, I mean, it, it can is. be. It c- why not? <laughs> Framebridge makes it easier and more affordable than ever to frame your perfect, your favorite things without ever leaving the house, which is perfect when you're taking 91 steps a day like me. <laughs> Add a gallery wall to your home office or send the perfect gift from art prints and diplomas to the photos just sitting on your phone. You can Framebridge just about anything. Here's how it works. Go to framebridge.com and upload your photo, or if you have something physical, they'll send you packaging to safely mail it in. Preview your item online in dozen dozen of frame styles and all gallery wall layouts. You could choose your favorite or get free recommendations from their extremely talented designers. The experts at Framebridge will custom frame your item and deliver your finished piece directly to your door, ready to hang. Instead of the hundreds you'd pay at a framing store, their prices start at $39 and all shipping is free. Plus, our listeners can get 15% off their first order at Framebridge when you go to framebridge.com and use code TOAST. You can order online, of course, but they also have in-person designers at their stores in uh, D.C., New York, Atlanta, Philly, Boston, and Chicago. So get started today. Frame your photos or send someone the perfect gift. Go to framebridge.com, promo code TOAST, to save an additional 15% off your first order. When you go to framebridge, F-R-A-M-E, bridge, B-R-I-D-G, dot com, promo code TOAST, Framebridge is re- is galvanizing the framing industry, which is archaic and expensive for literally no reason. Yes, exactly. I have some stunning photos, self-portraits framed around my home. And they make of yourself. For, of self-portraits, yeah. They make for some beautiful pieces of art in case yeah. you're looking. You can do a photo of yourself or a photo of me, whatever works. Whatever works. Or a photo of <laughs> me. Or a photo of Brew. Or, don't forget, you can really also actually do a photo of Theo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our next story. Jennifer Coolidge says Ariana Grande saved her career 
during a dead zone. Can I tell you I'm so – I meant to text you that I wanted to do this as a story. I'm so oh, glad good. you it up. Oh, okay, good. I think it's, it's just, the like, sweetest. the cutest, sweetest thing. A Jennifer Coolidge renaissance is in the making, and it's all thanks to Ari. The American Pie actress credits the pop star for reviving her film career and taking her out of a slump. Coolidge starred in Ari's 2018 music video, Thank You, Next, in which she played a version of herself – from Legally Blonde, her character Paulette. She told Jimmy Fallon, it was the beginning of a lot of cool things that happened for me. I was going through a dead zone, not much was going on. Then Ariana did this imitation on your show and you encouraged her and then this ball got rolling. Then she says her and Ari DM'd and Ari invited her to be in the music video. And since then, she has appeared in several high profile projects in the last few years, including Promising Young Woman, Swan Song, Single All the Way, plus of course, The White lotus you know what like when i think back to how i experienced the resurgence of jennifer coolidge i do i really remember it starting with Ari, like when she had makes me want a hot dog real bad like it really did happen that way and it was so cool a of jennifer coolidge to like totally acknowledge because jennifer coolidge is extremely talented and she probably would have had a resurgence no matter what but yeah. for her to give all the credit to ari was so cool and for ari just to be like this cool everything of the sort girl with like all this influence and power like you just love to see it no you love to see it and clearly happened in such an organic way I don't think Ari woke up one morning and said I'm gonna revive Jennifer Coolidge's career what today but it's just like the power of Ari and also like that video was so I mean I'm sure you know she has a ton of videos but that video was like a moment in time. time. I remember where I was when Me I first too. saw it. I was babysitting Theo at your house and we watched the premiere together. It was so Where was cute. I? You were probably on tour because it was 2018. Yeah. I remember watching it in like a car or something. That tracks. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think this is just really cool. And I, I think we're all better off for having Jennifer Coolidge back in our lives. A hundred percent. Thank you, Ari. Thank you, Jen. And you know what this reminds me of? I'm sure you didn't see it. But... Um, you know, in the David Dobrik, D- Dobrik vlogs, he has, like, a couple signature songs that, like, he loves. And so whenever he ends a vlog, he plays, like, Dancing Queen. There's, like, three songs. And one of them is this song by Carolina Liar, Show Me What I'm Looking For. Honestly, these sound like great, great you know song choices. Of course. I love yeah. that song. So it's, like, an iconic old song. And David Dobrik was on his podcast and his friends surprised him with the lead singer of Carolina Liar. And the guy was like getting so choked up. He's like, you don't understand. Like, you have saved me. I was living on the streets. I was homeless. And like, you know, with YouTube, like you get revenue and David's videos are so big. And he uses this song in literally almost every single vlog that has like tens of 20s of 30s of millions of views so he's just like putting money in this and like really resurging his career and now he's like making content with him it was so it was such a nice moment and this is what the Jennifer Coolidge thing reminded me of because this just happened like a week ago oh my god that's beautiful I didn't realize that that's where the story was gonna go yeah and so he like performed the song and David was like so excited and then he was like no you don't understand like you've literally saved my life and David's like what are you talking about he's like I had no money like the music industry is just so tough and like I had this breakthrough song and then you know like shit happens and David just like continually pumping up this song and then getting other people to stream it and David has so many followers like right. literally changed this guy's life oh my god when was this episode like a like a week and a half ago like his oh, friends wow. his friends got in contact with the lead singer and then they were like David we have a surprise for you and David was like really shook wow that's a great story yeah it was cool not that that's the same circumstances as Jennifer Coolidge but it just reminded me no yeah Love a story like that. Feel free to share anytime. Yeah. Um, So thank you, Ari. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Jimmy Fallon. He was a part of it, too. Like, if it weren't for the crazy reach of those annoying Jimmy Fallon videos on YouTube, (laughs) we might not be here. Yeah, but no one does those better than Ari. Like, that segment was made for her where she impersonates people. Like, no, I've never seen anyone do it quite like her no I've seen a lot of people actually do it and it's painful and cringy no and I think other people like have like three people that they can do who are like you know easily doable though I'm I don't do impersonation so I shouldn't judge but Ari like is an impersonation queen an impersonation chameleon yes she can really do anyone and obviously her best is Celine Dion but so good so good okay are you ready for our fifth and final story Oh my god, already? Already. And it's some weird legal news. It's the final story. I won't do the whole thing because people have made their opinions known. Their opinions known. And I'm here to please and entertain and not torture. But um, And apparently that's what I was doing. So it's good to know. (laughs) 
Our fifth and final story, Anna de Armas fans are suing because she was cut out of the movie yesterday. Not yeah. yesterday. No, I know. The movie yesterday. The film like, co- titled the yesterday. The film titled in quotes yesterday. She was in the trailer for the movie and then wasn't in the actual movie. And now two fans have filed a federal class action lawsuit on Friday alleging they were duped into renting the 2019 film. You know film what? Because Anna appeared in the trailer. You know what? That's actually fair. Like, this is, there's so much false advertising, like, when it comes to TV and movies. And that's fair. You know what? And maybe, you know, ready? you know what this reminds me of? Watching the trailer for Love Hard, thinking Heather McMahon was going to be in it so much. And they didn't put her in enough. And if I had rented it, maybe I would have sued. But I got it for free because I'm a Netflix subscriber. So here's what's interesting. So Anna de Armas was meant to be in the movie. She was going to play, like, the lead character when he goes to LA and is like singing he was gonna like she was gonna play the girl that he was like wooing there but then I guess the directors felt like it took away from the integrity of the main love story which was between him and Lily James so they cut out Anna de Armas completely um but apparently there's been a suit like this in the past someone in 2011 filed a complaint involving the film Drive because they said that the film um the trailer made it appear that the film would be a high-speed action driving film, and she was not prepared for the film's slow-paced interpersonal drama punctuated with graphic violence. (laughs) I love this. Right, okay, but she did not win because they ruled that the trailer demonstrates, um, like, everything that's in the trailer is in the movie. If they package it in a way... No, but see, that's the precedent for this because everything in the trailer was not Not, in the film. Yeah, no, and I feel like that happens so often. Like, you'll see a scene in the trailer and then you're like, wait, where was that in the movie? No, and you know what? I'm actually really glad that there's some accountability happening. Like, because we all go, it's actually psychotic how we, like, all go spend money and watch movies, like, that we know actually nothing about. And more often than not, they're either not like the trailer at all or they're much worse. Yeah, so... I, I wonder what's going to happen here because it is false advertising. She is not in the film. And especially because, like, she's su- – I mean, it does, I'm sure it doesn't even matter that, like, she's a big star and I wanted to see Anna Armas and I didn't see her, even if it was someone renting the movie because they thought, like, their kid was in it right. and then the kid got cut. But then, like, I'm sure it's the no, same thing. Right. It's the definition of false advertising. Like, yeah. And I, I'm no lawyer, but I do think these gals got a case. And I'm fully – they have my full support. Yeah, it's two guys, and I don't oh. know how much they're suing for, but they should at the very least get their rental feedback, which was three ninety nine, three ninety nine yeah. on Amazon Prime. A hundred percent. And you know, I think the whole concept that we like rent movies, like on our, or like we buy apps and everything, and all these like Amazon and Apple, you can't get refunds like for anything. Like, what if I accidentally downloaded a seventy five dollar app one time? You know, which did happen to me, by the way. You accidentally downloaded it? I accidentally downloaded an app that was $75. And, like, there's no line to call. Like, what app is $75? It was this, like, cartoon drawing app. I downloaded the wrong one. Literally, don't ask. Okay. But it, I swear to God it happened. Maybe it was, like, sixty nine ninety nine. I was like, oh, shit. Like, I realized one second too late that I clicked the wrong one. There's no customer service. There's no live chat. Like, what the fuck? Apple does have live chat. And I actually, since we're talking about Apple, I just want to bring something up that happened to me. Um, oh, because yeah. you guys have all been on this computer journey with me. And last I left you, I told you I was ordering the computer from the factory. So it was going to take a few weeks. and But I was willing to be patient to get the computer mm-hmm. that I wanted from the Apple. The of your dreams. Apple, Mac, trillion dollar company, the biggest stock in th- the country. You know, I'm, I want the computer that I want, whatever. Yeah. Um, I happened to be talking to Lauren Elizabeth and she told me that she was getting a new computer too and that she was getting it in two days from somewhere other than Apple. And I was like, oh shit, mine should be here soon though. Let me go check on it. My order was canceled. They never even told me that it was canceled. Did it, it was, send you an email? Did not send me an email, an update, yourself. nothing. All of my recent Apple orders now are canceled, canceled, canceled. You can't get a computer. You can't get a computer. Supply chain, man. It's so crazy. This trillion dollar company. Yeah. How? Where are the trillions coming from? If you can't, literally, can't even pay to get a computer. So what'd you do? You went to Costco. So I ordered a computer from Costco, which is where Lauren Elizabeth told me she was getting hers. So I didn't even know that. But if I need a computer, I will go to Costco. Yeah. Now. If you need an Apple computer, go to Costco. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. I don't know. So Did that's my the story. Oh, that, Anna yeah, Darmus. Anna Darmus. Uh, hopefully, we get an update, even if it's just the fee that they get paid back. I hope. I you hope. Know, but they're also probably adding like emotional distress, legal, and then <laughs> then if you see someone and you win, they have to pay your legal fees. So you know what? I think this will be very interesting. I look forward to a movie being made about this. Yeah. 
And you know what? If I sat down to watch Anna de Armas and she wasn't there, I would feel emotionally distressed. I would. Yeah, especially like as we were just saying, you never know who impacts you. And Anna de Armas might have been one of those celebrities for one of these guys. Yeah, exactly. I think there's more to the story. I hope they get the justice they so desperately deserve. I think so too. And I think it sets a good precedent. And maybe it will keep these trailer makers in line. Yeah, no, and just like these overall marketing departments from just spewing lies. Yeah. And what a bummer for Anna de Armas, like to just be cut from this movie. I mean, I think that happens all the time. Yeah. And this movie was like really before she popped off. And it was bad. And and it was atrocious and she should be glad that she's not affiliated with it. She was saved. She was saved. But I'm sure at the time she's like a budding actress. She's like in this movie that's, you know, Beatles. It's going to be everywhere. Of course. Lily James. And she gets the axe. Yeah. Who even knew that she went through that? No. And now I have so much like sympathy in my heart for all Anna de Armas has been through. It must be so hard to be a Hollywood actress. I'm just crying on the inside. Yeah, I really like her. I think she's a great actress. I've only seen her in um, Knives Out. Mm -hmm. So good. So good. Knives Out 2 is coming soon. Is it? Yeah, they're working on it. So is White Lotus 2. And it's, do you see it's set, taking set place in, in Sicily? Italy. Yeah. And Jennifer Coolidge will return. But that, that means that the crew from Hawaii won't be in it? No, except Jennifer Coolidge. I was kind of looking forward to, like, the stability of having the same people. Like Ar- I mean, I guess Armand, like, lost his job a million times over at this right. point. But, you know, like, having the same setting and just, like, bringing in. It feels like a reality show. Yeah, but it's not. So it's just going to be a whole different show. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right, let's, speaking of shows, dive into the TV recap, where we're going to start with Salt Lake City, um, brought to you by Third Love. Third Love does comfort, and so can you their bras underwear activewear and feel good all day wear are designed to hug better hold stronger and support longer third love obsesses over each stitch so you never have to think about how something feels looks or wears the 100,000 five star reviews do not lie so third love is celebrating the year-round love that endures your ride or die best friend your favorite cardigan your kids your loyal fur baby and so you can celebrate valentine's day with the luxe intimate gift set and ultra soft loungewear that hug better support longer and love you right back so i've been wearing third love bras like since i found out about the company and they were like a life-changing brand for me and then finding out that they made pajamas which is obviously like a category that's very near and dear to my heart was just very exciting and the, the pajamas are literally just as good as the bra they fit well they're like very supportive at night they're breathable i think the perfect pajama is a very specific formula and third love has has nailed it and they've also nailed just bras in general especially when it comes to sizing they make it really easy to find a bra that actually fits with their um fits with the fitting room quiz is what you take it's like a personal shopper but it's much better because it focuses on size breast shape current issues with your fit and your personal style to find bras and underwear that are perfect for you they've helped 18 million women find their true bra size and by the way the the if you've been battling with your bras the key is knowing your size and i did not know my actual size until i started wearing third love bras i swear in my life they're also the largest donor of undergarments in the U.S., partnering with organizations across the U.S. They've donated over $40 million worth of bras to help people in need. Feeling is believing. Upgrade to everyday pieces that love your body as much as you do. So right now you can get 20% off your first order at thirdlove.com slash toast. That's 20% off at thirdlove.com slash toast. Great. Okay, let's talk about Salt Lake City. It was literally so infuriating. <sighs> okay. So we're in Zion. And everyone's being unreasonable. And I don't really understand how we went from, you know, this major news story about Jen Shaw and the fraudulence and the arrest on camera to literally villainizing Meredith Marks. I don't know how we got here, but I do know that, like, everyone is the worst. Whitney has overnight become the worst. Jenny, I've seriously in my life never met a bigger loser. Like, and I, I honestly, she probably won't return to the show after what happened to her on social media this week. I heard and- she's filming. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Well, I can't stand her. Like, she, every time she says something, she thinks she's doing something, and somebody has to tell her she's doing nothing. It's giving nothing. No, and she's constantly playing a bad game of telephone, like, getting information and then telling it to someone else, but, like, misrepresenting the the heart of the matter like Mm -hmm. the thing about the private investigator was cleared up in two fucking seconds and it it was just infuriating i'm actually so glad i'm so glad that we didn't recap last week because it was just last week's episode which i watched last night was like a clusterfuck 
every like I was after that episode I was going to be like like how do we have a show anymore these women can't even like they can't focus on one thing like they and, can't focus on Jen they can't focus on Mary they're like every little feeling that bothers them they have to make into like a full-fledged fight because they think that it'll make the show better but we're getting so off course and you know how I know they're doing a bad job when I think after last night the person who came out on top looking the best was Jen Shaw after last well yeah after last night um first of all I agree I don't even know where I stand. I'm so perpetually confused by the show. And I think Meredith is who I root for the most because I think she has the most sense and also behaves in a way that's like less like a reality TV star and more just like I'm a, a person human. and you and you fucked with my family. Fuck off. I don't care the fact that we're filming a show like that just is never going to be forgiven. Mm-hmm. Sure, we can like get in the hot tub and have a drink, but I will never forget what you did. And I feel mm-hmm. like that's a very uh, real Reasonable. human response as opposed to like Lisa Barlow, who is the uh, a political housewife like yeah. she will say so and fraudulent. do. But like, I also kind of love her, but she will say and do anything to keep being on the, to be relevant, to be on the show. But like, that's, that's what drives her. So, and that, that's fine by me, but, but I, it, I it actually, just is. Like, Jackie, I cannot listen to one more conversation of like theorizing why Meredith wasn't on the Sprinter band. Like, I don't understand why it's so difficult for all these women who are all mothers to understand why Meredith Marks just decided to take her own car as opposed to spending six hours in a van with Jen Shaw. After all, and then we found out that the she hired a private investigator and the private investigator surmised that there's a 90% chance the threats that, the death threats that are going to Meredith's house and to Meredith's family are coming from Jen Shaw. So after we know all of that, they still don't understand why she didn't get in the van and they're pressing it so hard every meal. They don't stop even though she's given them the answer. If only they pressed Jen Shaw like slightly about some of the accusations, a percentage of what they they push on Meredith for the reason she wasn't in the van, which is not hard to understand. No, and even taking Jen out of it, like these girls are fucking annoying. Like, yeah. just who wants to be on a van with them for six hours? Who wants to be in a van with anyone for six hours when Meredith had the option the first time to she fly. she flew private, I think. And yeah. when So Mary flew private. And then the second time they just flew. Why would anyone subject themselves to the van? Like the, the being in the van is really not a part of the job. Like being on the trip is a part of the job. I'm surprised that Meredith even stayed past the first night. Like she is being I a team player. But sometimes like you need personal space and boundaries and it's like if I'm gonna be trapped in a house with all of you people who are talking like just the most random shit about me for three days you know what I need mentally to prepare to get there and that includes not riding in the van to nothing has ever made more sense than that to me and that the the fact that they can't get over it is so annoying also like everyone was just annoyingly drunk at the dinner and so not making a lot of oh my god it's infuriating you know what Lisa Barlow was right about one thing Whitney Heather bad weather the two of them together are atrocious literally and they think they're so funny and quirky and smart and right about everything and that like everything they do is gonna go viral i've never found two housewives together more annoying in my life I, and i've no, never went from liking them so much to literally can't even listening to them they had a good first season it's yeah. leah mcsweeney syndrome and yep. now they think they can do no wrong when they were laying in the bed like trying to avoid meredith <sighs> like no, I can't. Like, and Meredith was totally right. And Lisa Barlow's, like, kind of the queen of, like, going to people's rooms at night and, like, changing things. Yeah, because, I mean, I, 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 I understand the move. It's like, first of all, she participated in an unsavory conversation about someone that she considers a friend. She mm-hmm. has a pit about it. This is at the me giving her the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. She has a pit about it, and she wants to go and unburden herself. And it's really, like, more so for her than for the other person. Like, she feels guilty, and she needs to share. Others might think, such as Whitney, that she is going and, you know, you know, showing herself in a good light, admitting to her sins and throwing everyone else under the bus. I think yeah. it's a mixture of both. I think it's a mixture of both, too. I just felt like the whole episode, like everyone was being stupid. And honestly, there were just so many cringy moments, mostly coming from Jenny. Like anytime she tries to like stand up and like say something in someone's face, she like just doesn't. She doesn't do it justice. It's a flop. It's a flop. And, like, she's just consistently on the wrong side of history. Like, consistently. And I think she's just trying to gauge. And, like, why is she having so many private conversations with Jen Shaw? She doesn't even know her. I have no idea. And I think it must be hard to be a new housewife and come onto this scene because the lines are so blurred of, like, who's friends with who, who's loyal to who. Like, you would have thought that, like, if Jenny's friends with Lisa, that means Jenny's 
friends with Meredith. with Meredith. But no, because Lisa and Meredith can barely stand each other. I don't know where they stand now. Uh, to me, that friendship like is a, feels like a loss. Whenever anyone I mean, comes if on the I show, was Meredith. Whenever anyone comes on the show and they're friends for say minimum five years, like have been actual friends before this, and the show like finds a way to come between them, or they they allow the show to come between them, it, it does make me sad. And of so, course. and I think that the two of them, I would like to see them get back to being like good friends who have each other's backs. Me too. But like, I don't know how honestly L- Meredith could like live with herself if she let Lisa back into her home after Lisa like so weirdly out of nowhere became best friends with Jen Shaw the second Jen Shaw started saying homophobic things about Meredith's son. Like, I don't know. Meredith doesn't seem like the type of girl who can get over that. Right. And then next week, um, what she says about fucking half of New York. Right. I, Meredith meredith doesn't forget no and i wouldn't either and it's annoying because i agree with you i really want to like lisa and for me every i start to like her more when she's like a good friend to meredith and it's like she's becoming a worse friend every episode yeah agreed and did you watch watch what happens live last night no lisa was on and i think like things between her and meredith are strained but i do feel like she's trying to get back on meredith's good side because all of the answers that she gave to stuff were like put meredith in as like a a flattering light light well she's also since the show has started airing she's been like very vocal on watch trappings live and just like podcasts and stuff that she's like anti-gen shot she can't be friends with someone who like committed these crimes but she's like acting very differently on the show she's just so fraudulent like i will never believe she'll say the sky is blue i'm like but but it's not yeah i i just i'm like but why what motivates you to say that Right. Where, where are you coming from? And she like, what, she's gonna, like, what are you getting out of this? And she says all the time she hates how everyone thinks she's like so calculating and manipulative, and she's like really just like living her life, which I want to believe, but like I've been, I've been misled. Yeah, and then these people just like talk in circles around each other to the point that like I really don't care. But like when at one point Jen said like that she really believes that Mary and Meredith in some way are connected to the FBI showing up at Beauty Lab, like is the most nonsensical thing I've ever heard in my life. And I can't believe that I'm spending my time watching people on t- television who could, believe something like, who could believe something like that. And even if though we no one... we reunion and Andy doesn't immediately point out how moronic that is, that, like, random citizens don't get nine-year investigations being put, like... If it's not squashed, like, I will be so annoyed. If they treat it like an actual possibility, like, yes, you can call a tip-in on someone. But it's just so stupid like I can't I can't this this show is actually making me so frustrated yeah no it 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 is we've lost sight of we've lost the plot and I was just like how 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 does this happen it was like it's so weird to me it was nice to see but it's also so weird that they like one the night before they could not even sit around a table and have a conversation and then the next night like they are having the time of their lives like sociopathic I don't (laughs) I don't get it. I'm glad that they were able to mend fences and have a good time. But how can, how is that possible? Sociopathic. It's crazy. I have no idea. That was one of the big – that always happens on trips. You get a rough start. You get the mm-hmm. fight out. And then, like, everyone comes together. But, like, that was one of the biggest leaps I've ever seen. Yeah, it was nuts. It was not – it was unnatural. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like it's just chaos every episode and I'm actually not enjoying it, which is annoying because this is supposed to be like the benchmark season of the franchise that'll give it like, you know, we'll be talking about this. We will not be talking, like these women have dropped the ball so hard. They're not doing this storyline any justice Mm -hmm. and I can't, period. Period. Um, and then I finished watching Ted Lasso. Which was so good. And yes, it still is this like happy, fun, go lucky show. But like there was some drama. And when I, so when I, spoiler alert, when I found out when Trent Krim, who I love, the independent, told Ted Lasso that, you know, Nate was his source, I like was gagged. Like I was never been so shocked in my whole life. And then I was able to kind of figure out that, like, he was definitely going to be the coach for Rupert's team. So that, like, end thing didn't really surprise me. But the end whole- thing, that's what I was saying when I was recapped it. I was like, the last second, like, even though it's not a cliffhanger show at all, like, it totally shocked me. I thought the coach was going to turn around. It's like this coach with gray hair. So I thought it was, he was going to turn around and have a gray, like, just be a random guy with a gray mustache and be, like, fake fed faso. Right. And when it was Nate, 
I was shook to the core. I was shook to my core, but I had predicted it. Okay. But I had not predicted Nate becoming, like, I knew he was, like, you know, acting out, blah, blah, blah. And I thought, like, Ted, you know, was going to give him one of his pep talks and put him back in his place. I did not expect this villain origin story from Nate. But you know what? I really kind of appreciated, like, how realistic. Like, that's how people become monsters. Like, you give them one ounce of kindness and they become monsters. Like, it was just very accurate, in my opinion. It was so sad to watch. I don't think that happens all the time. No. But it, it, it can happen. And it, n- now looking back, it's like all the signs were there and it started very slowly. And even just the way he treated the guy who replaced him That's was like so That's how you know. He was so giving awful. Tom Wong's gams. Yes. But then... Like, even the spitting on the mirror is, like, his his power pose. Like, the first time I saw it, I was like, ew, someone has to clean that up. And then it just became, like, extremely disrespectful that when he would do it, like, wherever he was. And it it was just – it was shocking to see. Yeah. So, like, I like that the show is kind of taking this turn now. Um, but everyone's like evolving. I love that Roy Kent came back to coach and Keele is starting her own PR firm and Sam and Rebecca. That was shocking when, when he was, okay. When, when she was like texting that guy on banter and like, she didn't know who he was, but obviously it was going to be someone we knew. Like, obviously I thought it was Ted. Oh my God. Well, first of all, you know that. So a few weeks ago, after I watched the movie Love Hard, when I said that there should be a dating app that's no pictures, and someone's, people said that's a storyline on Ted Lasso. So I was really excited to see how it played out. In my version of the app, you do have names. And of like uh, you also can have like talk about your profession. Details. Yeah. You, it, it's just no photos, not everything else. Because then you get into a situation like that. Maybe I thought it's murderer. No, or like with someone that works for you and right. it's inappropriate. So yeah. I did not think that they were going to go through with the relationship, like because it really is crossing a lot of lines. But I, you know, I want love for Sam and I want love for Rebecca. And, and if they found it with each other, then then that works. And I think it just is proof that we need an app like this. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um. So all in all, I really enjoy the show. There were two and you were telling me this. There were two episodes where like me and Ben, I, I would have finished the whole show on Saturday night. But I watched two such atrocious episodes in a row. <laughs> Me and Ben were falling asleep. The first episode, which was like the – what's his coach's name? Beard? Beard. 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 The Beard origin story, like where he like had that terrible night. And I don't know why. They were like being really cryptic. Like I thought he was going to die. Did you? <laughs> no, I don't remember what I thought. Because he was like so verklempt when he said goodbye to Ted at the stadium after losing to Man City. Mm-hmm. And he was, like, kind of, like, depressed. And, like, all this bad stuff kept happening to him. I'm like, oh, no, is he going to do something, like, bad? I don't know. And then nothing happened. So I was like, what the fuck was the point of this episode? The point of the episode was apparently they turned in 10 episodes to Apple TV. And Apple TV said we need 12. So they stuck in two evergreen episodes, the beard and night. The funeral. And, the, and the funeral, which both of them, if you take out, don't change the storyline at all. I wish um, someone had told me that. I would have skipped them. Like, they were so bad. Yeah, they were especially they were really, the beard one. Especially the beard one. Yes. Um, but the Christmas episode, I don't know if that's season one or season two, was probably my favorite like Christmas holiday episode of a TV show like in a really long time. Not only was it like giving you all the holiday feels, like so sweet. The storyline about Roy Kent's niece who had bad breath, I swear to God, like I actually, <laughs> me and Ben, we could not breathe. Like we had left – so hard we rewinded a hundred times that obviously that iconic scene I-, I think you might be dying so good like just pure comedy genius i enjoyed it so much yeah that is so funny but anyways so i was saying like i do feel like you know the, sh- the show is very like light and happy go lucky but there are like darker elements at play yeah and i don't know if it's just like our culture has a really um strange relationship to alcohol but it does feel like everyone on the show has a drinking problem yes and i don't know if they're gonna address it or that's just like how we approach drinking these days or it's a drinking in british culture because like the pubs and everything the pubs yeah but i think it's it's all of us like i don't think it's a, a british thing like Ted, they just every time there's like something stressful, they're just like pounding beers, like it's it's copious amounts of alcohol, and and things in shows like everything is placed like for a mm-hmm. reason, like every number of drink, like everything is intentional. Yeah. So I do feel like it's leading us to like someone here has a drinking like or, but I also think that there's more than one. Every time Rebecca takes a sip of champagne, she downs the whole glass in one sip. Right. No. And I just I, that's not like healthy behavior. So I I feel like there's more forces working at play here. I had thought. 
um, in the beginning that like they're always showing Ted with alcohol. Like Ted might struggle with alcohol down the line. Yeah, I think so too. Especially, um, especially when he's like going through it. That's what he turns to. Which right. I think a lot of people, you know, when you're Do. having a hard day or a rough time, like yeah, I'm gonna take the edge off. But it seems more pointed than that on the show, and I I feel like that's an intentional move. Yeah. Um. So thank you for the recommendation. I very much enjoyed it. I'm so glad to hear it. When have I ever led you astray? Um, that show on Acorn. Wrong. A place to call home. A place you guys, to call home. If you're looking for a new show that's just going to sweep you off your feet, the magic of love, family, and everything community of the sort, download download Acorn <laughs> TV. Wait, you guys. I actually have a code for you from the Redheads, and I'm going to share it. One month free of Acorn. Okay, live your life. Um, this is not an ad for this show. But go to acorn, acorn.tv and use code book to get your first 30 days free and binge watch the show A Place to Call Home. Guys, this wasn't even like a staged ad. It will stick with you forever. Um, the last thing I want to forever was, was last night's euphoria. Forever. Oh, last night. Okay. What's no, going on with the kids? Penis? Okay, honestly, like, maybe this is a hot take. I thought it was a really boring episode, even though, like, it had the, this moment in it that, like, we saw in the trailer a few weeks ago when people, like, the sound has been going viral on TikTok, and they're just, like, waiting for the moment where Cassie says, I have never, ever been happier! And, like, we got it, and, like, it was just, like, it was a daydream. Like, she didn't actually say that. You know, she just wished that she did, you know? Oh. Um, so it was like kind of a boring episode, but we did, did get like a Cal Jacobs origin story, which obviously made him extremely sympathetic because you get this romance of like him and his best friend growing up who are both closeted and they have this like one night where they realize like they're both like in love with each other and it's like so cute. Then the next morning he finds out his girlfriend's pregnant and that girlfriend is actually his wife right now. So like it just, we never got to see the Cal and Derek story and like we know why he's so evil. Not that it justifies any of his behavior. But it was an interesting I like I liked going back in time to that little era of Cal and Derek. I a ship. Um but back in like modern the present, really nothing happened. And there was like this weird editing slice of like Lexi's play. I wasn't on board with it. Like, I don't know. I just maybe I'm spoiled because I binged it all at once. So I'm used to like things happening. And this mm-hmm. is like two episodes in a row where like I really wouldn't say anything happened. I think that's what's happening is you binge a show and then you have to get used to watching it episodically and it changes things. Right. Because like I can tell you, you know, all of season one, like all the things that happened. And now I'm just like, what the hell is even happening? Like what really happened this week? You know, Kat is, you know, having a hard time with her boyfriend. Um, Nate brought Maddie flowers instead of Cassie. The scenes of Cassie gua ing and ice rolling and getting up at 4 a.m. to get ready for school because she wants to look cute for Nate. Like – that was funny and she like keeps showing up jackie in like more and more crazy looks that like literally by the end of the week she looks like the the school play is oklahoma and she like teased her hair so much they thought that she was auditioning for the play oh that's funny but yeah nothing really nothing happened so like except rue once again just being dumb like so i told you you know she's struggling with addiction and like she was in uh recovery of course she's not anymore um and so not only is she like lying to everyone around her about being in recovery she's now decided to start selling drugs which is just obviously a dangerous dumb thing to do so because she knows like it'll get her access to drugs she'll get herself free drugs and then she'll like money for drugs so i think in her head it makes a lot of sense and of course she knows she's an addict so that's her only focus at the moment but she's just not being wise you know there's so much violence in euphoria and it's all around the drugs and she's next Whoa, that's a lot for the campers. It's a lot for the campers, and it really was not, like, a great episode. So I'm going to need something to happen, like, now. Okay. Or you could batch, save them and batch them. I can't because if I scroll TikTok, I get so many spoilers. So, like, last night I was being such a loser, like, literally watching it 9.01. Oh, wow, that's losery. But are you not able to, like, mute? You should be able to mute, Topics. topics on TikTok. You should. That's actually a really good idea, but they don't do that. 
Okay, free idea TikTok. If Once you're again, listening. here at the Morning Toast, just giving out free billion dollar ideas. I heard my TikTok is making a resurgence across okay, the web. I went on your TikTok like <laughs> on Friday and just watched every single one of your old videos. You were so good. Like, and your apartment has really good light, so you were just like making premium. I, I mean, I said that you should get back on TikTok. I would enjoy that so much, but you won't. But it's you need a hobby. It was a moment in time. Okay. And people you never- are loving it. I feel like if you have the app and went on and logged in, like you would see people are still commenting, like living for their, the the content. That's so sweet. Um, yeah, it's hard to separate the like creating on TikTok from scrolling on TikTok, and I think the scrolling on TikTok is what is really toxic and takes up like all of your time and your brain cells, and I that's agree. that's what I'm trying to avoid. Um, but you also can't create on TikTok without scrolling and seeing what the trends are, and then you just like fall down the rabbit hole. So right. it's all it's, it's all mixed cycle. I couldn't just like hop on there unless I was just posting like videos from AC's diary, which um, works for us, <laughs> which also works. Maybe she'll come back, but right now her phone has been confiscated because she's been spending too much time on it. Yeah. AC is grounded in a big way. Um, and so am I, because that's the end of our show. Yes. And we love you guys. Thank you so much for listening to the Morning Toast and Millennium Morning Show, where we deliver the past five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast anywhere podcasts can be found. So that's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeartRadio, CastBox, all the places. So wherever you listen to podcasts, find us. The Morning Toast and leave a five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and smart we are. Hope you guys have an amazing day. Don't forget to stream my song, 100%. Never too late to become a redhead. Follow Jackie Ashray on Instagram. Follow Girl With No Job on Instagram. We've got a big call with our lawyers today about our Instagram for the morning toast. We are on top of it. We love you. Have a great day. Goodbye. Goodbye. Wait. Okay. We're here. People, somebody left a comment, like at the end of the episode, sometimes you say love ya and sometimes you don't and it really affects their day. So I just want to make sure that you can do it. I didn't realize that I say it at the end of the episode. That's always how I hang up the phone. Yes. Love ya. Bye.